So with uh, the next panel is uh, essentially not so much a panel as a discussion, and it will include myself and uh, Constable Scott Mills. Scott Mills is the Corporate Communications Social Media Officer with the Toronto Police Service. And the idea that Scott and I have for this to, is to sort of take two parts. The first will be Scott will be going through and introducing to some, one of the things that's happened at a lot of these conferences, we talk about things like Facebook and Google and all these technologies and sort of work on the operation that everybody understands what we're talking about. Scott's going to go through what these uh, programs are capable of and he'll show you what the Toronto Police Service in particular can do. To my knowledge, Scott might be the only social media officer actually for any police service across Canada. I'm like, you can correct me. Got a few more. There's a few more. Well, Scott will take you through it, and uh, with that, and then I'm going to turn into something called uh, what, which I've called crowdsourcing the investigation, and uh, it may raise as many questions as it answers, and that's part of the purpose of it, actually. So, with that, here we go. Awesome. Well, it's a uh, it's an honor to be here uh, with you today. Uh, I'm Constable Scott Mills. I work for Toronto Police Corporate Communications. I'm a social media officer, which is the whole front end of things. Um, and uh, we've got uh, Constable Warren Bolmer in the audience here with, from Toronto Police Service as well. Um, he uh, he's a, a specialist in uh, back end investigations uh, using using the internet. So uh, welcome to Warren, and uh, thanks very much for uh, having us here. Uh, what you're seeing here is we're um, we're actually live to YouTube right now. Um, and we're doing something called a Google Hangouts on Air, and uh, we've invited some uh, some other people from the public to join. So there may be some people that join on. And uh, what you're seeing here not only can be watched live, but it can be um, watched later when you leave on YouTube uh, simply by doing a, a quick Google search uh, for your conference name or, um, or the title of the uh, of the workshop. So um, I'm just going to minimize that, and uh, I'm going to bring up. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to bring up the Toronto Police website because what we're going to talk about here today is what the Toronto Police Service is doing on the front end. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples where situations have happened in Toronto. Um, where a lot of social media activities occurred and there's a potential for evidence that needs to be captured as a result. Um, the, the, one, the one example I'm going to show you is um, the Eaton Center shooting, which, which is basically where we're at uh, right now in, uh, in Toronto. This is physically where we're doing this presentation from, is right beside the Eaton Center. So um, if a situation like that would happen right now, um, my role as Toronto Police Service Social Media Officer would be to communicate with our corporate communications team who would be in, in consultation with the officers in charge of the scene to try and get official source information out onto Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube and Google Plus as to what's, uh, what's happening. Um, and what you're seeing is a Toronto Police website and if we were broadcasting this uh, YouTube hang on, how to hang out on air um, directly onto the Toronto Police website, it would actually come right to the top of the website right there. And it's being broadcast by this webcam right here. So essentially I could be standing at the scene broadcasting with the same setup that we have here. And it would go to the front page of the website. And what you have going down here is um, the uh, social feed for any one of the 280 Toronto police officers who have taken a three-day training course on using social media for communications, essentially to uh, affect our mandate of helping to stop and prevent crime. And once those officers have taken the course and, and uh, it's overseen by corporate communications that they're actually using the tool effectively uh, with a two-way dialogue uh, with proper content, they're put onto this social feed. And as soon as they tweet, or uh, down here, if they have a Facebook, uh, it will uh, come through the social feeds on the front page of the website. So in effect, if there were to be an emergent situation right now that came to my attention, um, from 
this uh, Toronto Police Service issued BlackBerry, um, I could get official source information uh, as to what's going on, and I would type it onto there, and uh, the public would be able to see what what we're doing and what the situation is, and uh, we'd be managing the uh, the emergency situation like that. Um, it's very quick, within about 10 to 20 seconds of actually putting a tweet out. Uh, Twitter is the one we use for emergency management the most. Uh, the news kind of breaks on Twitter and falls on Facebook. Um, uh, within about 10 to 20 seconds, what we've tweeted on there will be being read by all the major news outlets if it's an emerging situation like the Eaton Center shooting. So uh, the, the, the rule that we have in our office is um, verify twice and tweet once. So there's a whole lot of scrambling behind the scenes to try and get the official source information. So it's really good to have something like a, a BBM group or a WhatsApp group going on with your, your uh, official uh, people involved. And, and the more of the, the uh, units that are involved in a situation that can be networked there that are decision makers, like intelligence divisions and divisional commanders and scene sergeants and things like that that are in that back end loop, the better because that uh, is the, be the better information that, that we can get to, uh, to get it out here. Now what that effectively uh, creates, whether we want it or not, is when an incident happens, we've got evidence that's potentially being put into social media. And uh, I'm only going to show you uh, this one example of this. Um, this is a publicly available service. I don't know who runs it or who owns it, but it's called Epilogger. And this is what they're doing is, is they're just out there crowdsourcing the information that's coming in. And it's my humble opinion that, that we should be crowdsourcing the information coming in as quickly as, uh, as, as we can in order to capture it for the potential nugget of gold of evidence to solve the crime. But even more importantly, um, if we were doing things like this uh, with relationships and technology and social media, kind of walking the social media in beat in advance, we could see indicators of potential issues like the Danzig Street shooting, for instance. Um, if you've got boots to the ground in real life and social media as a cop, you could potentially see that somebody's talking about potential problems there and that you could increase your police presence there in a proactive way in order to be on patrol to prevent the, uh, the violence from happening in the first place. So um, Epilogger is kind of neat because you can look at the, uh, the Eaton Center shooting right there and there's 69,666 tweets that have mentioned it. As, as we've heard from previous presenters here today, uh, that creates a lot of volume of potential evidence and, and a real uh, sorting um, uh, challenge for everybody. Um, you, it, what this service does is it actually um, will take all your media posts as well, your tweets, your blog posts, and people that are checking in at the scene. So if I arrived here today at the scene and say I took a picture of my friend Stephen and I posted it, uh, onto my Foursquare, for instance, which geo tags me to this location with Steven, then potentially that could be evidence. So that, that is catching it. So where this works great is if you've got your communications and your investigations effectively talking with each other and working collaboratively together with purpose and process, that'll get you the, the, the potential and that'll get you the payoff. Uh, I, call it, I call it the four Ps. Um, so I'm going to uh, flip into uh, a presentation here, and uh, this is a presentation that Stephen and I both um, both prepared together, and uh, we agreed to just kind of uh, I would talk about the front end and get and get the crowd thinking here about what the front end looks like, and and a little bit of the back end and I go into some of my key messaging and then Stephen will take over here and he'll talk about some of the legal issues uh, relating to, uh, to, to everything that you're seeing here. So Stephen put this uh, a, a disclaimer in that the opinions expressed herein are those of the writer and the presenter and are not necessarily the opinions of the Toronto Police Service, the Attorney General of Alberta, or those of the Department of the Solicitor General and Justice of Alberta because that's where Stephen works. Um, 
he's got about four or five of my slides. Stephen prepared this in here, and they are from a presentation that is approved by the Toronto Police Service. And, and I'm really proud of where we've come from and where we're going uh, with all of this, uh, because pre previously I had that same disclaimer in, in, the, in the slides that I had, and it was all about relationships and technology. And the, the heart of the matter is, do you become a friend with a member of the public? And for education, like teachers and, and people like that, that that's a, an issue that they're struggling with. Um, uh, should you become friends? And, it, and the whole issue is, um, will you, um, uh, could you be accused of being a groomer? And uh, when, when, I say this, when I say this statement, um, th this is just me speaking here, is, is that if you're not out there, um, you're not going to be able to see the one that's becoming a groomer. <laughs> and your kids are kind of out there th themselves. So um, that potentially could shift the legal liability the other way as to why weren't you out there. And we're getting a lot of things like suicide issues in, in social media and things like that, uh, where we're able to actually see, or it's reported to us, that there's a suicide issue, and it's not just us, it's to education people and social service workers. And we're able to actually take action and go out and do an intervention. Now what that creates is a an international global need for coordination because somebody that's seeing something in social media could be dealing with somebody they don't know in another country. And you need to be able to act on that and get it to this, uh, the uh, people who can act in a timely way to do an intervention in another country. So as you can see, uh, it gets pretty big. Um, that's just who I am. Um, my username uh, officially for Toronto Police is just Toronto Police on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, and there's a Toronto Police Google Plus page. Um, I'm also known on all those platforms as Graffiti BMX Cop. It's because I'm, I'm very passionate about working with kids under the uh, graffiti and BMX themes. And I, I work with these kids instead of chasing them around. And that creates the trust that actually gets a lot of people that generally wouldn't follow the police to actually follow a police officer. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're into graffiti or BMX, it just matters that you're out there visible, showing your face and creating that trust, doing whatever you do. And then uh, if there's a need for an emergency or somebody needs to come to you, you're there and, the, and you can act. Um, we have stopped a Virginia textile school shooting as a result of information that's come in that way at a major university campus here in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, so the, the results are pretty amazing. This is the key messages uh, that are officially approved uh, for this presentation by Toronto Police Service. Is that uh, adult mentorship in real life must be continued into the cyber world to prevent societal violence. That there's a paradigm shift from legal liability model to policy driven relationships and technology approach is essential for community safety. Um, I'm the one who wrote in, in capital letters there, stop blocking social media. Um, some of our challenges are that uh, we still have uh, things blocked for people like probation officers and corrections officers and things like that. So we're actually broadcasting like you're seeing right now from Toronto Police Headquarters on, on a homicide where the players are essentially in the correctional institution and the whole idea is that everybody can see what's being said from the official source, yet when some of our justice system participants and friends uh, go to watch it, they can't. On, on their on their service, so that that's what, those are just things about to think about going forward. Start community building and preventing violence with social media. Don't look at it as the as the evil enemy. Uh, relationships and trust between adults and youth are key to the prevention of bullying, gangs, suicide, threatening bodily harm, threatening death, sexting, online intimidation, terrorism, or mass shootings. And of course, my PowerPoint wants to lock right now. <laughs> right when it's getting to Steven's turn. So I don't know why that's doing that, but we're having a little, this might stop, or we might just have to uh, kind of reboot the com computer to get it going for Steven's presentation, which would kind of be too bad. Um, so um, essentially where we're going with all this type of stuff is uh, that we're out there on the front end uh, the next slide, which I uh, can't bring up uh, due to the technical issues here right now, essentially has what's called a hashtag on it. Um, 
if something major were to happen at, say, the Eaton Center here, we would say follow hashtag, which is a number sign on Twitter, uh, and everybody could kind of tweet into that hashtag that wanted to tweet into that hashtag, and you could see what everybody's saying really quick. Um, so you can use those for something positive and good like a conference today. If the conference here had a hashtag, people that are in other uh, locations uh, may be able to actually uh, see what's going on. Thanks a lot. And you always need a backup like you just saw right here when somebody hands you a book because your technology is failing you. Um, the irony is that cannot be lost. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. So. Um, Essentially, uh, the uh, key message uh, number four here is that uh, the adults um, include parents, teachers, school administrators, police, social workers, justice system workers, correction staff, probation officers. If you look in your book, it's on uh, page standable connected relationships that create trust, which fosters reporting of concerns of violence to be dealt with by authorities before something like a mass shooting, a bombing, a minor bullying incident potential gang involvement and uh, and suicide. A lot of people will say what is the the qualitative or quantitative analysis that you can give of the effectiveness of this? Quantitative analysis is very very difficult with the use of social media, so you really do need uh, leadership. Excellent. It came back. And um, essentially um, the only uh, statistic that I can give you is uh, is that uh, in Toronto Crime Stoppers in a three-year period uh, when we first started using social media and, and having kind of a relationships and technology strategy, it's not just social media, it's actually engaging with people and celebrating the Community Crime Stoppers program went from 300 a month to 1,000 a month and they continue to rise. And, and the good part about all this is that a lot of those tips involved prevention uh, another really good part about it is that uh, um, the tips, um, the, the tips that, 